So we have these then three structures that are at play in our culture, and that's traditionalism, modernism, and postmodernism. And often at odds, sometimes at war with each other. And integral is basically the structure that arises out of postmodernism that is friendly to all three in a certain way. Indeed, I would say that's an excellent definition. And I would add to that that <clears throat> While we can talk about these worldviews as stages, and, and that's a useful simplification for purposes of identifying and understanding these worldviews as discrete systems, which sort of stand alone and have their own, their own uh, kind of uh, values, even though they bleed over into each other, is that they form a kind of a structure that, that the problems of traditionalism in history, the limitations of feudalism, for example, were one of the, the life conditions or the environmental problems that called for uh, a transcendence that, that could only be achieved through a new set of values brought about by the Enlightenment. And so for a long time there we see a, a, a tension, um, what's known in philosophy as a sort of a dialectical relationship, right, a thesis and antithesis between uh, these two major phases of human history. And then we can also see that the postmodern is in antithesis to modernism in a very similar way that traditionalism is. We can see not only are these um, stages or structures sequential in time, you know, they come after each other in history, but we can also see how they reinforce each other because the problems of one animate the values of the other. In other words, the, uh, as, as one of these stages becomes successful and achieves a, a sort of degree of, of, of um, success within the, the, uh, the solving of the problems that it arose to solve, those very problems, those very successes become associated with a specific set of problems which then calls forth uh, a transcendence beyond, right? So just like uh, modernism is curing many of the problems of traditionalism and moving beyond it, postmodernism is attempting to do the same with modernism. The integral worldview arises because uh, Postmodernism as a stage of history, as a culture, as, as a worldview structure, is beginning to achieve some of its successes. If we compare to uh, compare American culture in the 1950s to American culture here at the beginning of the 21st century, we can see that postmodernism has made some major uh, successes in terms of the uh, equality of wo women. Certainly, something that began within modernism but came to fruition with the feminism of the of the 70s and 80s, 60s. Um, we can see that uh, people are way more multiculturally sensitive, that we're more spiritually sophisticated, and we have a, a much degree, a much larger degree of pluralism in what we understand to be uh, uh, acceptable and within our culture. Um, more sensitivity to other cultures. Indeed, uh, right. Gay, gay rights, environmentalism, Absolutely. these are all mainstream. Right, well, at least they're in, in the struggle to become yeah, mainstream exactly. as we speak. Yeah. And so there have been many triumphs of postmodernism, but we can now begin to see really in, in the very same vein as we recognize these successes, and there's plenty more work to be done, uh, that we can, um, we can recognize that postmodernism itself uh, could be assisted through a kind of a corrective transcendence that not only transcends it, but attempts to include it with the others in a way that it by itself cannot. There's a harmonization of these structures, of these worldview value systems, that the integral worldview offers, which the previous stages of history have not. So uh, one of the, the tenets of the integral worldview is that it, is that it, it springs out of the counterculture in a way. It, it, it brings forward many of the important values of, of postmodernism, which sort of modernists reject or make fun of. But because we are not in, in so much antithesis with modernism, because we're not pushing off against the problems of modernism, we're assuming that that job's already been done to a, to a degree by postmodernism, we're now ready uh, to go beyond the antithesis to the, to the synthesis, right? It's really a three-part system, thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. And so our attempt here is to, uh, is to have a new understanding of culture and consciousness and values uh, and indeed uh, the universe as a whole, um, and that this way of seeing, um, although it is philosophical and partially spiritual and has a meta-narrative that, that in, sort of takes in a broad sweep of history, uh, it nevertheless becomes extremely practical uh, uh, quite, quite rapidly, and, and that's one of the main reasons why I'm interested in integral mm -hmm. philosophy. Yeah 
is that I've been, um, really I've had allegiance to postmodern culture as we're defining it since I was a teenager. Sort of I grew up in the 70s and, and um, really came to define myself. And indeed, po postmodern countercultural values provided my identity in some very important ways. And it was because of that identity that I felt that uh, I had a duty to try to make the world a better place, right? Not that, that uh, you know, I had sort of the transcendent answer in some kind of neo-Marxist utopian vision. But I did feel as though um, that I had been uh, gifted in the circumstances of my life and that, uh, that with this, with the gifts that I had both, you know, physically and culturally that I had a duty. So it was in, in the pursuit of, of this duty and the frustrations that go there with, right, it's a, a cliche to mention uh, uh, Gandhi's famous statement, we, we must become the change we want to see in the world. Uh, but I really took this to heart and tried to find out how I could become the change. And it was through years of reading and thinking and practicing and discussing that I came to see that, um, that there was this new way of seeing, which was indeed transcendent and historically significant. And the reason that I've become um, a participant in this emerging worldview, an advocate of it, is that I can see how it, it does actually represent a way for people to literally become the change and uh, uh, make a difference in the world through raising consciousness. And, and that's one of the key elements of integral thinking, is that we can see that consciousness evolves. 